Extinction Rebellion made their way through the capital's financial district today, pouring red paint as they went in what they described as a blood money march. All week, groups have staged protests in different locations in central London. Carolyn Sim will be live outside Mansion House Station in a few minutes, but first her reports on the day's action. It's the end of the working week, but Extinction Rebellion are far from weary. Their fifth day of action starts in the city, surrounding the Bank of England ahead of their blood money march, where London's financial institutions are accused of investing in fossil fuels. I do not want to be judged by the colour of my skin. United for Black Lives are here, calling out the city's legacy of colonialism. We need to be able to put aside any differences and see how do we work together to amplify each other's voices because we are on the right side of, the, of this history. As the march gets on the move to the usual beat of the drums, there are stops to be made along the way. First up, a blood-soaked, or rather paint-splattered, standard chartered, and two protesters perched on the entrance. Then I see nothing wrong with this. We, we live in a, in a democracy where we have the right to peacefully protest, and I'm expressing my right to peacefully protest. For a tiny bit of money that this rich bank has to clean this up, I don't think it puts people off, to tell you the truth. I think people have wised up. Then it's on to the Corporation of the City of London, where red paint is sprayed onto the Guild Hall. If it gets us noticed and our cause noticed, then it's an important part of the protest. And I think we have to look at the damage in the context of what's just happened in Germany. I mean, how much is that damage from that flooding cost? This is nothing in comparison. The atmosphere is calm and upbeat, but as time goes on, are people tiring of the campaign? The official start of this fortnight of action was Monday when a giant pink table blocked roads in Covent Garden. At least eight protesters locked themselves onto it. 68 people were arrested. On Tuesday, a die-in was staged in Westminster with more so-called lock-ins. Police had to cut people out and arrested 112. Oxford Circus was brought to a standstill on Wednesday. There were 92 arrests that day. And yesterday, activists staged a sit-in outside a government department, resulting in just seven arrests. At times during this week where the measures that have been taken by Extinction Rebellion, using complex lock-ons at major traffic junctions or places where businesses need to get things in and out, that has been unreasonable. And as a result, the police have had to step in quickly. Today's blood march comes to an end with a rather grisly scene, and there are seven more days of this to come. Carolyn, a busy week you outlined there and a busy weekend ahead then. That's right, and I thought those scenes that we saw at Paternoster Square would be the finale for today, but I was wrong, because behind me, demonstrators have put up a bamboo structure. They've attached themselves to it. It's called a tensegrity structure, and it's very difficult to get people down from there. And that's what the police were saying to me earlier about these lock-ins being so disruptive, because it's going to be some time before this demonstration comes to a close. And there's no let-up for police over this busy bank holiday weekend. More Extinction Rebellion protests to come, music festivals and football matches to police and they're going to have to bring in reinforcements from neighbouring police officers in order to police that. And of course there's another week of this to go and police officers think there will ultimately be more arrests.